Hi there. I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, music, machines, and life, uh, or more specifically, what we learned from the creation of a very large and complicated machine for a music video. Some of you may recognize this image. This is the opening frame of the video that we created. We'll be showing the video at the end. But be before we do, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, what it is that they wanted. Now, uh, when we first started talking to OK Go, uh, the, the name of the song is This Too Shall Pass. Um, we were really excited because they expressed interest in building a machine that they could dance with. And we were very excited about this because, uh, of course, they have a history of dancing with machines. Um, they're responsible for this video. Here it goes again. Uh, 50 million plus views on YouTube. Four guys dancing on treadmills, you know, no cuts, just a static camera, a fantastically viral and wonderful video. So we were really excited about working with them. And, we sort of started talking about what it is that they wanted, and they explained that they wanted a, kind of a Rube Goldberg machine. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, a Rube Goldberg machine is a complicated contraption, an incredibly over-engineered piece of machinery that uh, accomplishes a relatively simple task. So we were excited by this idea, and we started talking about exactly what it would look like. And we came up with some parameters that, that you know, because building a Rube Goldberg machine is, you know, has, has limitations, um, but it also is pretty wide open. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we did something that would work for a music video. So we came up with a list of requirements, the Ten Commandments. And they were in order of ascending difficulty. The first is no magic. Everything that happened on screen had to be very easily understood by a typical viewer. Uh, the rule of thumb was that if my mother couldn't understand it, then we couldn't use it in the video. They wanted band integration, that is the machine acting upon the band members, specifically not the other way around. They wanted the machine action to follow the song feeling. So as the song picks up emotion, so should the machine get grander uh, in its process. They wanted us to make use of a space. So we had this 10,000 square foot warehouse we were using divided between two floors. It included an exterior loading dock. We used all of that, including a giant hole in the floor that we actually descended the camera and cameraman through. They wanted it messy and we were happy to oblige. The machine itself would start the music. So the machine would get started, it would travel some distance, reacting along the way, hit play on a, an iPod or a tape deck or something that would start playback, and the machine would maintain synchronization throughout. And speaking of synchronization, they wanted it to sync to the rhythm and to hit specific beats along the way. Okay. <laughs> they wanted it to end precisely on time. Okay, so now the start to finish timing has to be perfect. And they wanted the music to drop out at a certain point of the video and actual live audio from the machine to play part of the song. <laughs> and as if that wasn't enough, all of these incredibly complicating things, right? Um, they wanted it in one shot. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, w just some statistics about sort of what we went through in the process. The machine itself has 89 distinct interactions. Um, it, it took us 85 takes to uh, get it on film to our satisfaction. Of those 85 takes, only three actually successfully completed their run. We destroyed two pianos and 10 televisions in the process. We went to Home Depot well over 100 times. <laughs> And we lost one high-heeled shoe when one of our engineers, Heather Knight, left her, her high-heeled shoe after a nice dinner and returned back to the build and uh, left it in a pile of stuff. And another engineer thought, well, that would be a really good thing to use and ended up using it as a really nice trigger. And it's, it's actually in the machine. <laughs> so what did we learn from all of this? Well, um, having completed this, we get the opportunity to step back and reflect on some of the things. And we learned that small stuff stinks. 
little balls in wooden tracks are really susceptible to humidity and temperature and a little bit of dust, and they fall out of the tracks, and the exact angles makes it hard to, to get right. And uh, yet, a bowling ball will always follow the same path. It doesn't matter what temperature it is, doesn't matter what's in its way, it will pretty much get where it needs to go. But as much as the small stuff stinks, we needed somewhere to start so that we would have somewhere to go. And so you have to start with it. You have to focus on it. Small stuff stinks. But, of course, it's essential, right? What else? Planning is incredibly important. <laughs> you know, we spend a lot of time ideating and even building some of these things. It's been said that uh, no battle plan survives contact with the enemy. Um, I think our enemy was physics. And uh, <laughs> she's a cruel mistress. And uh, <laughs> often we had to pull things out as a result because of timing or aesthetics or whatever. And so while planning is important, so is flexibility. These are all things that ended up not making it into the final machine. So also put reliable stuff last. The stuff that's going to run every time, right? Again, small to large uh, is relevant here. The little Lego car in the beginning of the video uh, references the big real car near the end of the video. The big real car works every time. There's no problem about it. The little one had a tendency to try to run off the track, and that's a problem. So, But you don't want to have to reset the whole machine because the Lego car at the end doesn't work, right? So you put that up front so that if it fails, at least you know you're going to... You don't have to reset the whole thing. Life can be messy. There were incredibly difficult moments in the building of this thing. Months were spent in this tiny cold warehouse. And the, the wonderful elation that we, that we had when we finally completed it. So it's important to remember that whether it's good or it's bad, um, this too shall pass. Thank you very much. And now to introduce their music video, we have OK Go. Of course, an introduction. Hello, TEDx USC. We are OK Go. What are we doing? Oh, just hanging out with our Grammy. What, what? What, what? I think we could do better than this. Hello, TEDx USC. We are OK Go. Have you read the Natural Curiosity Cabinet? I mean, Curiosity, excuse me, Cabinet of Natural. I'm starting again. We, we need some more ridiculous things besides the Cabinet of Natural Curiosities. Do you have a pipe, Damien? Tim's sundial hat. Have you seen the new work they've done to the Waltz Towers? Sorry, I'm starting again. <laughs> Dogs. Hello, TEDx USC. We are OK Go, and this is our new video. This too shall pass. Oh, oh. Fight on. Okay, one. We can still do one better, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that one's pretty good. It's getting, it's getting better. <laughs>
Investment in broadband high-speed internet can help small businesses create new American jobs. Small businesses are being formed, dreams are being launched, and at AT&T, we're investing billions to upgrade and build out our wired and wireless networks. Now is not the time to stall momentum or stifle innovation or investment. Jobs, dreams, and the future are at stake. AT&T, your world delivered.